If you have pain in your low back that's traveling down your leg, particularly into the lower leg and the foot, then there's a good chance that you have something that we call sciatica. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what sciatica is, what causes it, how you can tell whether you have it or not, and my best two exercises to help give you some immediate relief. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume. I'm a chiropractor currently based in Dicko, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at sciatica. Now, sciatica is essentially not a diagnosis. It is a description of a symptom. Sciatica basically means that there's been some irritation to the big, thick sciatic nerve that goes from your low back all the way down to your foot. It supplies the skin and the muscles of your lower limb, of most of it at least. Now, if this gets irritated, then it starts to cause pain in the distribution of that sciatic nerve. And so most commonly that's down the back of the leg or sometimes down the side or the front. And that goes mainly in the lower leg and the foot. Now, when it goes just in the thigh or the back of the thigh, there are many different things that can cause that type of pain. So it's a little bit less obvious whether it actually is coming from the sciatic nerve or another nerve or maybe even a joint like the sacroiliac joint. But if it's going into the lower leg and the foot, there's a good chance it's coming from this sciatic nerve. Now there's lots of different things that can cause irritation to this nerve. There are two causes that are very common. The most common will be a disc herniation. This is essentially where you get the disc, which is in between each one of the bones in your uh, low back, in your spine, when it protrudes, so it herniates, and it hits one of the nerves that come out here or the nerves at the back in here. So essentially it's a spilling over of this disc that causes then a compression or irritation of the nerves in your spine. If you get that irritation, then you start to get then sciatica. This is much more common in younger people because younger people have discs that have the ability to be able to herniate because there's more water content in them. As you start getting older, 60 plus, the chances of you getting a herniation in the disc actually is a lot less because you get less water in your disc as you start to age and therefore they actually become more stable and less likely to herniate. Now the second most common type of sciatica is a more stenotic type and this is more common in the older population, those that are over 60. And so this is actually now not the herniation of a disc but where you get a degeneration of that disc so it starts to get narrower and narrower and then you start to get less space where this nerve comes out and then you start to get compression of that nerve. So this can cause a very similar type of issue where you get the pain down the leg, but the presentation often being quite different. Now, everyone presents quite differently, but in general, if you've got a disc herniation, often it's gonna be worse when you're bending forwards, when you're doing your laces or you're putting on your socks in the morning, it's often gonna get better with walking and worse with sitting, and it's often gonna be worse first thing in the morning. Whereas a stenotic type of problem in the older population would tend to get better with flexion, better with bending forwards and worse with bending backwards. And often it can get worse with walking. Often people say that they can't walk more than 10 minutes and then the pain comes on and then they have to sit down to relieve the pain. It's very classic for a stenotic type of issue. So how can you tell if your leg pain is coming from sciatica, if it's coming from that sciatic nerve? Well, essentially, if you're gonna stretch that sciatic nerve, then it should reproduce that pain. It's a very easy way of finding out whether you've got this type of issue or not, is essentially just to stretch your leg. Uh, do a hamstring stretch, do what we call a straight leg raise. You can do this in the seated position and you can just extend your leg out in front of you. And if that causes the pain, then there's, there's a chance or higher chance that you have sciatica. You can do this lying down and simply keeping your knees straight, you just lift your whole of your leg all the way up. And again, if you start to get aggravation, uh, particularly if that pain goes down the leg as you start doing that, then there's a higher chance that the pain that you're getting is from the sciatic nerve. Now be careful when you're doing this type of test because it is reproducing the pain, it's gonna aggravate the pain. So if you do it too much uh, or go overboard with this, then you can actually make things a little bit worse. So if you do have this type of issue, what can you do about it? Well, I'm gonna focus more on the disc herniation types of sciatica because this is the most common type. So to begin with, let's have a look at the position. So you're obviously gonna to want to avoid sitting because sitting is gonna put the most amount of pressure on the discs. As you sit, you have the most amount of pressure going through here. And so that's gonna push on that nerve more. The least amount of pressure is gonna be when you're lying on your back. When you're lying on your back, that's gonna be the least amount of pressure. And so 
that's going to be the more ideal position for you now the other thing you want to do is walk as much as you can because walking is going to initiate the movement within that disc and it's the movement that you really need as much as possible because the center of this disc doesn't have a blood supply so it actually relies on the motion that you get from walking to pump the nutrients in to help the healing process so you want to make sure that you're moving but at the beginning quite often you might just need to rest and if you want to rest most commonly it's going to be on your back and you can also try and put a pillow underneath your low back because what that's going to do is provide a bit of extension and therefore take the pressure off the disc at the front here but at the end of the day you've got to do what makes you feel good follow how your body responds don't do anything that causes any pain the other thing you can do is if you are going to sit down if you need to sit down say for your job or whatever then put a pillow behind your low back in your seat just to encourage a bit of extension in your low back again that will just take some pressure off your disc of your low back. So then getting onto the exercises, the first exercise is gonna be a decompression exercise or a distraction exercise. So what you're gonna need is two chairs or basically just two things that you can hold onto. You're gonna put one hand on each one and then you're gonna lift yourself up onto the chair just slightly. So you're basically, you're not lifting, you're not actually lifting yourself up, but you're just taking the pressure of your body, taking the weight of your body and putting it onto your hands and your arms, probably about at least 75% of the weight of your feet. And what that's gonna do, if you allow it, is it will then pull your legs down and create a bit of a distraction onto your spine. That will help then to pull open the, the discs here and open up the space where your nerve comes out in your spine so often this can give some relief it's not going to give relief in everyone so you got to try it if it works for you then it's going to be a nice way of getting some quick relief particularly if you're in a lot of pain now the second exercise is going to be a cat camel now i know i've gone through this in a lot of my videos but it is really one of the best exercises you can do if you're suffering with back pain and this is certainly no exception now, when you're doing this, most likely you're going to want to focus on the extension because it is the extension. If you have a disc herniation, that's going to take the pressure off that disc. And so you're not really going to want to go up all the way to the top into the flexion um, so much. You want to focus more on extension. Now, if you haven't seen this exercise, let me just go through it with you. So essentially what you're going to do is go on your all fours. So hands and knees, 90 degrees at the hips and shoulders and then keeping your elbows, your shoulders and your hips all still, you're just gonna move the spine down and the head up into a, a cat position. And then you can do the opposite, bring the head down and bring the, the spine up. And so you're gonna create that kind of curve and that's gonna be your camel position. Now, as I said, you wanna focus more on the extension. So this, this is gonna be the more downward motion. The downward position is most likely gonna give you the best relief if you have a disc herniation. What I suggest is do the full range of this exercise, find out what helps you the best and find out which areas are painful, avoid the painful ranges and concentrate on the pain-free ranges. This I would suggest doing eight times up and down and you can do this every hour, particularly if you're in a lot of pain. I particularly recommend do this first thing in the morning and before you go to bed at night. And you can do this as often as you like really, but I'll suggest if you're in a lot of pain, do it every hour. So doing my best tips for if you're suffering with a disc herniation, if you're suffering with sciatica, I know it's not a nice pain. It's sometimes one of the worst pains you can experience. So I really hope you do recover quickly. The good news is, is that majority of people will recover usually within around six weeks without any treatment at all. However, if you're not getting any, any relief after that time period, then you certainly want to go seek some professional help. Now, if you're suffering from sciatica, even if it's for a few days, I would always suggest everyone go to see a chiropractor to get the problem firstly diagnosed to check to, or to see where that pain is coming from, whether it's a disc herniation or stenosis, or maybe it's something else like a sacroiliac problem. And then you can get the proper treatment manually. And also you can get some more specific exercises based upon that diagnosis. You also wanna make sure that this isn't a problem that's gonna just come back again in the future. And so you wanna find someone that can help you to restore the proper function of your spine back to where it was uh, where, before you had the issue. So certainly uh, find someone like a chiropractor to help you out there. 
but hopefully in the meantime these exercises will help you please do put any questions that you have in the comments below i'll be happy to answer them and i'll see you next time thank you bye bye